When you're in the outdoors, there are a lot of ways that you can utilize to start a fire. Uh, depending on where your geographical location is at the time, some methods are better than others. But basically, um, the two most popular methods, I would say, are the Bic lighter and the ferro rod. Now, they each have their um, groupies and uh, uh, everyone has strong opinions on the subject as to which one is best. That's not what this video is about, but um, no matter which method you like, uh, we're, we're going to try to give you a, a means of, of ensuring greater success when you're trying to start a fire with either method. Now, the main complaint that people have uh, with the lighter is that it's ruined when it gets wet. So, as you can see, it works very well now that it's dry and conditions are good. But if I were to dunk it into the water, you know, a canoe tip was over and uh, you have it in your pocket and in you go, your lighter gets wet. Now, it's much more difficult to get this thing to go. The lighter itself is not ruined, but what happens is the water acts as a lubricant between the wheel and the piece of flint that's inside. So, in physics, that's known as the coefficient of friction, and the coefficient of friction gets lower. And the lower it goes, the more difficult it is to start a fire. You want higher friction. Now again, this is not ruined, it's just uh, a victim of the laws of physics, and if you shake it out, um, dry it out, blow it, you know, eventually it's going to start working again. So, people who uh, utilize the ferro rod as their primary means of lighting a fire uh, state that this limitation of, of the um, lighter, in that when it gets wet, it, it doesn't work, um, is why they prefer the ferro rod. Now, the ferro rod is operates on you know pretty much the same principle: friction and uh, the steel striking against the rod creates the spark, and you need the dry tinder, and uh, you get your fire going. But the ferro rod is not immune to the laws of physics. So, if I were to dunk the ferro rod, take it out, and try to get my fire going, you see that I can't get a spark, because the water is acting as a lubricant, lowering the coefficient of friction. So, you have the same problem. If you dunk your canoe, and this goes in the water, or it's pouring rain, you need to have a dry ferro rod. You need to get rid of that lubricating layer of water. And now, now we're, it works. You know, it comes back a little faster than the um, lighter does, but ultimately this is going to light again. You know, it is not ruined. Just takes a little more effort. So, how do we fix this? In the old days, the main method of uh, hunting or uh, the main article of weaponry that a soldier had uh, was, a, was a flint and steel rifle, the musket. That was the cutting edge technology for about 300 years. And um, unlike the modern day bullet where everything is contained nicely in a waterproof package, you have the projectile the uh, powder inside and the um, primer um, with a flint lock you had a separate piece of flint hitting a steel when the trigger was pulled which created a spark which ignited the gunpowder now people took great pains to keep that gunpowder dry so anytime you had someone with a flint lock they always had a powder horn which was you know, an animal horn, which is hollow, and they put their powder in there, and, they, you know, some of these were very ornate, and they're collector's items today. But the idea was, if you got your uh, 
uh, gunpowder wet, you're you're not going to fire your your flintlock, and you know that could be a a problem in the heat of battle. Uh, conversely, you don't want to get your actual musket wet either, because once that flint gets wet and the steel gets wet, again that water acts as a lubricant in between the two and stops the uh, the content. Just curious, see if the lighter has come back yet. Still wet. Ah, here we go. There we go. So see, the, the lighter is not ruined, but now that layer of lubrication is gone. So the old timers took great pains to keep their gunpowder from getting wet. Um, that's where the expression, by the way, you know, you know, when soldiers were going into battle, their, their officers would tell them, trust in God, but keep your powder dry. And keeping your powder dry has now become a, a, a cliche, which means do what you can to ensure that you don't get caught short. Prepare. So, uh, even today now, you'll see when uh, people go out into the woods and they collect natural tinder. Um, they, they take great pains to keep it dry. You know, whether it's dry grass or uh, if you use... If you use jute twine, you know, you'll, you'll put, keep that dry. If you use cotton, no matter what it is, it's common sense to want to protect your tinder because your tinder is important. But somewhere along the way, uh, we've lost the idea that we also have to keep our main means of, of starting a fire, whether it's the ferro rod, a lighter, a bow drill, no matter what it is. Um, uh, we keep our ferro rod on our keychain, or we put it on our knife sheath exposed to the elements, and, you know, that's probably not the best use, or the, the, the lighter we just put right in our pocket and go on our merry way. If we take the same precaution with our means of acquiring fire that we do with the tinder and just drop it in with our tinder now the entire package is waterproof so we can dunk this we can you know take a spill we can do play in the snow and yet not only is our tinder dry but our means of making fire is dry as well and really that's as simple as it gets thanks again for stopping by and we'll see you on the next one